did you know that Tanjiro has godly Riz? I swear, Season 3 of Demon Slayer is turning up in his favor. Since he took on a Demon Moon, he's got more street cred than Sasuke after he manhandled Orochimaru. So when he wakes up from his coma, everyone is simping for him. Ro even charmed Inosuke, and later when he enters the swordsmith village, Mitsuri is all over him, and she's quite fond of Nezuko too. And when Bro told Mitsuri that he would work hard to defeat Muzan, to put it simply, the dam starts flooding, and then she does this. It's the equivalent of this moment from One Piece. Did you know that Tengen Uzui is an absolute chad? And it's not just because he's a respectable man with insane drip who pulled three extremely based and attractive Kanoichi who are loyal to a fault. Although this definitely helps his case. No, I'm referring to the fact that after that entire exchange with Gyotaro, you know, that put Tanjiro in a coma for two months, Uzui, who arguably got the worst of it, walks off his injuries with his wives in tow as if it's nothing but a scratch, even though he lost his arm. Did you know that in Demon Slayer, Muzan respects Akaza the most out of all 12 demon moons. And this is due to his overpowered combat experience, hatred towards the Hashira, and his desire to become the strongest being in the world. His abilities are even acknowledged by Kokushibo, the number one ranking demon. And as a result, he's given certain freedoms, allowed to pick and choose his fights, and is not required to consume women, privileges not awarded to any prior demon. Did you know that Mitsuri is one of the strongest Hashira in terms of physical strength? And this is due to her love breathing technique, which honestly sounds like something you'd find on the 34th rule. The elemental effects of breathing styles always mess with me, because they aren't real regardless of how awesome they look. But Mitsuri's breathing style is unique as it depends on manipulating her heartbeat, creating real tangibility. And love is the strongest emotion, as it can propel someone to do very questionable things and heartbreak can lead to someone's demise. That means Mitsuri's power is derived from her innate desire. The stronger her love, the stronger she is. Did you know that when Tanjiro defeated Gyotaro, his Demon Slayer mark actually changed and he got physically strong? Longer. The Demon Slayer mark was first discovered by Yorichi, who recognized that the mark essentially busts the user, allowing them to surpass their human limits and become greater fighters. It was heavily employed during the Sengoku period, later dubbed the Golden Age of Demon Slayers. However, there's a substantial consequence for utilizing the mark, as it significantly decreases the user's lifespan. In this way, it makes it the perfect overpowered power-up, because the choice depends on the person if the risk for power outweighs the reward. Did you know that in Demon Slayer, Daki had a peculiar obsession with the left eye? The first time we notice this fixation is when she talks to Tanjiro, threatening to gouge out his eyeballs and pointing towards her left eye. When she received a power-up due to Gyotaro's efforts, it was his left eye implanted into her forehead. And coincidentally, during her backstory, when a samurai insulted her brother's skeletal appearance, in response she blinded the samurai by gouging out his left eye. Essentially, this obsession stems from her subconscious desire for others to validate her strength, implied by the kanji character engraved on her left eye that translates to upper rank, even though that's Gyotaro's position. It's the embodiment of Daki's insecurity, deriving self-worth from the acknowledgement of others. Did you know that Tokito became a Hashira in only two months, something that was only accomplished before by Giyome? Tokito is a descendant of Kokushibo, born with unique abilities and an insurmountable talent which has allowed him to excel in his proficiency with mist breathing. When he first became a demon slayer, it was actually Rengoku who told him that as a Hashira, he has a duty to protect others, which is very interesting because later, Anjuro would impose the same thing, that positive actions have a way of helping us in the future. It's the theme of passing the torch which has been solidified since Rengoku's death death, while building off Tokito and Tanjiro's connections to Kokushibo and Yorichi respectively. Did you know the reason Kokushibo has six eyes is because Yorichi drove him to adapt his ability to keep up with his physical movements, which is actually emphasized by the puppet practice doll modeled after Yorichi with six arms. The increase in limbs was done to depict his superhuman movements accurately. Having six eyes no gojo drastically increased Kokushibo's field of vision to 360 degrees, which is accompanied by the fact that he strategically placed many eyes all over his blades for the added effect. But sadly, this also means he perpetually needs needs three pairs of glasses, making it even more ridiculous that he later runs the fate with Yome, who's blind. Did you know a lot of people don't like Tanjiro as an MC, and it's because he revels in the moral Jesus trope. And normally I'm not too fond of this approach to a character, especially with Deku, who somehow cries more than Aqua, and she's a useless water goddess. But Tanjiro evades every negative aspect about this trope, because of his unwavering empathy and how that is tackled in Demon Slayer. Considering his situation, he was so close to walking a path like Sasuke is crazy. But having Nezuko literally demonized, but still retaining aspects of her humanity, allowed Tanjiro 
Tanjiro to view a different side to the Demon Slayer world. Rather than truly hating the demons, he sees them as victims of their circumstances, just like himself. He talk no jutsus their ear off like Naruto, but he never gives them the chance to justify their sins. It's just that even demons deserve to rest in peace. Muzan is the perpetrator, the natural disaster, the absolute evil, and he is the lone individual deserving of divine judgment. Did you know that all 15 breathing styles in Demon Slayer are actually derivatives of some breathing, created by Yoreichi Sugikini, who was later honored as the strongest demon slayer in history. It's only later that the six main styles of flame, water, wind, thunder, stone, and moon would later emerge from sun breathing, while the additional breathing styles manifested from these separate branches. For example, Inosuke's beast breathing and Muichiro's mist breathing are derived from wind breathing. Mitsuri's love breathing comes from flame, while Uzui's sound breathing comes from thunder. And interestingly, in Shinobu's case, her insect breathing is the farthest dissociation from the original sun breathing. Did you know that Genya can't use any breathing techniques and it's actually because he doesn't have any innate talent, which is why he carries around a Glock and uses a different technique called repetitive action to take down demons, which is also supplemented by his unorthodox approach of consuming demons. Due to his brother Sonami's harsh criticisms and his own personal lack of power, Genya had to force his own methodology of fighting back against the demons, his combat style changing depending on the demon he eats and his own ingenuity. He eats demon flesh and gains their ability, and the more powerful the demon, the greater his own power. Ranking the Hashira as upper moons based on appearance. And last, I'm going with Tengen. He's missing the most essential quality of his personality, his flashiness. In 8th, I got Muichiro. It's cool, but there's better. In 7th, I got Rengoku, and kind of same deal with Muichiro. If he was a donut demon, he'd be number 1. In 6th, we got Giyu, and this is clean. The water is coming off like flames, and it's a great design. In 5th, we got Mitsuri. Instead of love breathing, it's less breathing. She's basically just another victim of Rule 34. In 4th, I got Shinobu. She looks menacing, and she gives me the same vibe as Makima. At the number 3 spot, I gotta go with Sanmi. My guy woke up this morning, went to work, and clocked in on demon time. In second, I got Guillaume. The two hands is a great touch, and it gives me Kokushibo vibes. But in first, I got Obanai. This guy is ice cold. He's the Arctic, with the penguins and polar bears. If I come across bro, I'm a goner.